There we go, we put a second light up here. Wow, what a difference. Still had to put it on night framing. She's running so smooth, just had to show you. There'll be a gust along here in just a minute. Sure you'll enjoy. I'm telling you, this has been putting pretty much a steady three amps into the battery all day. I've been enjoying that. <laughs> what are we doing, finally coming to a dead spot in the wind? Sure looks like it. Last time I saw something dip down, it picked up real quick afterward. Listen to how smooth. That whirring sound is the magnets passing the coils. Gotta love it. And the dump load came on and went back off. Not including all the lights inside, I've got a fluorescent out here and the uh, LED out here. Yeah, like I said, keeps dumping a steady 3 amps pretty much into it. I haven't seen it go below 3 amps very much. Anyway, yeah, I think uh, it's about 1, 1.30 in the morning, maybe 2. I haven't been keeping track of the time. I've just been watching this and babysitting it, watching it. It's been fun. I might just go ahead and uh, drink my last cup of coffee that I made on a candle. <laughs> Sweet and smooth, what a difference. Quite a bit quieter than the old one. I'm loving it. This gives me the data to work on uh, revision three. I'm gonna have the tachometer set up tomorrow. I got a reed switch, uh, an extra reed switch that came with my anemometer. I'm gonna go ahead and use it as a switching device and the magnet on the blade that's gonna mount on the side. Then I'll have the tachometer downstairs and we'll be able to watch everything. And that's when you get their real data. Keep smiling and have a ball. Man, she's pretty. I feel good. Take care. Yeah, I thought I'd share the wonderful, beautiful sunset with you. Yeah, it's right between a building here and a tree here. Yeehaw! Yeah, and this bad boy just went through some high winds, and the pole didn't bend, uh, but the high winds was only like 35. Uh, quite pleased. I still want more out of it. Uh, we'll have to figure out how to get that. I think maybe with the bigger magnets or actually heavier wire coming down this 18 gauge that comes out the bottom of the pole and then runs up and then comes down and runs inside the shop right up here and then going down and then all the rest of it to the battery sure does uh, put a load of resistance. Re uh, resistance is a voltage drop. Although this comes down in AC but uh, you still have losses. So anyway right now it's still the wind stopped you can darn sure hear uh, the train in the distance. Nice flat land, the sound carries good. The other thing I wanted to show you, which I don't know if I can see here, is right up there at the beginning, at the middle of the prop, right close to the hub, there's a magnet stuck in the blade. That's got super glued with a washer on it and then super glued again. And then there's a magnetic reed switch that I encapsulated inside a plastic tube with some polyester resin for, you know, for the fiberglass. And I ran all that down the pole after tying it off. And that comes into the shop. And that wire is this one. I did have it hooked up to the tachometer, but it was showing frequency. And I don't have the instructions with me, so I'm going to have to go home and learn them instructions and come back up here where I can set it to a tachometer. I really would have loved to know the RPMs during all the, the winds and everything that came down. But anyway, we got a little bit done and I'm quite happy. And of course, I've gone through another literal pot of coffee. <laughs> I'm Scott Brown, Green Wind, and other home energies. Many good things to you and yours. Hello, I'm Scott Brown, Green Wind, and other home energies. Well, this right here, that's a piece of straw that I crimped together. It's rather thick straw, about five times the thickness of a normal. I think it was a bushing for something, but I've got the magnetic reed switch inside there. I filled it up with polyester resin to make sure the wires don't turn because those things are fragile. Then, of course, I got the wire coming out. You can see right here these little wires I'm touching right here. Might look like a silhouette to you. I got the sun in the background behind this just to make the shot easier. Anyway, so I've got that, and it follows the same path. I got it wrapped around in a I have it coming right down the tube along with this one to the bottom. So anyway, you notice there's a hole in my prop. And down in the bottom of that is one of them uh, neodymium iron boron magnets that I use on the ceiling fan wind turbines. And it's right in line, right here. Got a washer on it, the other side. That's so the washer's bigger than the hole. I could stick the magnet to it, stick it in the hole, put super glue on it, and it stayed there. Now, this did not affect the balance of the prop, even though I cut that much wood out. It didn't affect the balance of the prop because it's heavier than wood. So anyway, we've got that, and as this spins, it activates this reed switch. Kind of hard to see when I'm looking at the sun. It activates this reed switch every time the magnet passes and puts a pulse in. So there we go. And I'll give this thing a spin so you can watch the tachometer work downstairs.
<laughs> this is Jonathan. This is my new faithful assistant. Anyway, at home he washes the dishes, but to get him down here, we got to get him to cook and I do the dishes. That's okay. Here at the shop, I just throw them away. Anyway, we <laughs> come out here. <laughs> We got the rocket stove going, another piece of a good chunk of meat, and it's tenderized. And it's already sizzled, we just stuck it on there. Seems the wind is going this way, so this side's catching most of the flame. This time we won't burn them. Last time I was up on the roof, I had Jonathan busy, I was busy, and I had to yell down, Jonathan, turn the stakes! Yeah, they were a little tough, but these ought to do okay. We're all done with the work, there's no wind. Barely enough to turn the prop, and then it stops, then it goes up, and you can see right now, nothing. This is where solar takes the gaps of wind and wind takes the gaps of solar. So anyway, we're going to get to cooking. We'll keep you updated on that. We got plenty of sawdust. Yeah. All right, well, we got that. We flipped the first one. It's been about five minutes. Oh, yeah, look at that nice color. Oh, she's cooking sweet. We're using an exacto knife to cut meat. <laughs> yeah. Definitely cooked all the way through. Not too bad. A lot more flimsy than it was last time. These move. We haven't used hardly any of the fleet fuel. Time to make the coffee. Oh yeah, that ought to do just right. Well, we got a little bit of wind today. Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. From the direction of the building and the direction of that, you can tell that pole got bent again. Just a little bit more than last time. It's a bigger prop. The wind wasn't near as high. But like I said, the bigger prop takes on a whole lot more windswept area show you what else I found it was freewheeling when I got here holy moly that means it wasn't under a load so the first thing I checked was this the first thing I looked at was battery voltage and uh, as you can tell 13.7 and the dump load not going off and the way that thing sounded out there and the wind was kicking no no way and it stayed there it didn't go up didn't go down it's doing just like it is right now so I took the positive wire I took it off of the diode up here and I stuck it on the negative terminal and shot out a nice bunch of sparks and she shut right down. Uh -huh. Then the negative had a fuse on it. I pulled the fuse out. It's a 20 amp fuse. And yes, it's blown. <laughs> it blew a 20 amp fuse while I was gone, so yeah, we know it does 20 amps. Don't know how long it's been freewheeling. That meter wiggling right now, that's just the wind. Uh, that's the only thing I got on right now. I got her all shut down, but at least I got some decent battery. So I'm going to replace that fuse. I might go with a 25 and see how that works. If I blow that, then if I'm not here and it does it again, then I know it does 25. We'll see what kind of fun we can come up with. There we go. We got about 7 miles an hour, 9 miles an hour. And we're looking at what? 235 a second ago. 212. 194 RPM. Yeah, it kicked off pretty good, started up pretty quick, looking at 188 RPMs. And that's going to really come in handy when I figure everything out. So, I know this prop, I know what this prop RPMs are, what winds, and I know where I want it to cut in, so I'll know how many RPMs I want to reach charging voltage at. That way the blade doesn't stall out. I can tell if the alternator is uh, reaching charging voltage too early. If it reaches charging voltage too early, the blades will stall out. If uh, the blade is spinning too slow for the uh, alternator, then it's going to take about 12 miles an hour to 14 miles an hour before it starts charging the batteries. Knowing this will allow me to build revision 2 on the bench, test it on the bench, and then put the prop on it and know exactly what it's going to do. This RPM meter here, digital RPM meter, is a lifesaver. It's worth its weight in gold as far as I'm concerned. And like I said, then we got this amp meter here. And and this voltmeter here. Right now I'm looking at the amp meter. Oh, there we go. Let's see if it'll start up on its own. Got a little bit more wind, not much. It's going pretty slow. I was looking at five and seven mile an hour winds. Eh, it's trying. Watching it uh, get to the uh, cut-in speed is pretty good. Now nah, I think we got a decent little gust here starting to spin you watch it all of a sudden it'll accelerate really fast that's when it gets to uh, cut in speed and gets lift one two three four five six seven eight nine ten now it's starting to speed up pretty quick what's the rpm 150 190 214 202 191 it's jumping around all right what's it to now 
196. She already took off, Bubba. That's good. And this thing will keep on spinning around till it, uh, when the wind gets down to three miles an hour, I've seen it keep on going down to two miles an hour and hold there and then pick back up. It's just like once it reaches cut-in speed and you know it's got lift, it doesn't stall out for nothing. It takes 170 RPMs for it to get the charging voltage, which is right at about a seven mile an hour, I'm sorry, about a uh, five and a half mile an hour wind. So that's not too bad. And it doesn't stall out. Uh, it'll keep on uh, pushing amps. The wind picks up, and it picks up pretty quick. I've seen it go about a half amp and then slam up to about three and four. And like I said, it blew that 20 amp fuse. And what I wound up having to do was rewire a bunch of stuff and get it all set up. And now I think uh, I'm not going to have any problems with that anymore. I'll show you what I did. Yeah, I know some of the wiring here is real thin, so when I go, I'm shorting it out, and I, which I'll do right now. If you listen real good, you'll hear the wind turbine stop. And you see them sparks for just a second. Anyway, I didn't hear it go bang. Usually you hear it go bang. You're looking at the RPMs, they just went to zero. So anyway, there we are. What I have up here, uh, we still have that light. But we got five lights up here. The wiring's a little thin. If you look at uh, 250 watts up on this for 120 volts, you got a certain gauge of wire. But when you go to 12 volts, it takes 10 times the amps. When I did the math, 50, uh, 250 watts divided by 12 is 20 amps. That brown and uh, yellow wire right there is definitely not thick enough, but it lights them up not as bright as they should be been down here and yes I have a fire extinguisher so I'm gonna hunt down some thicker wire and hook that up and I'll probably rewire the lamp as well just to make sure anyway I'm Scott Brown Green Wind and other home energies many good things to you and yours Pretty. I can hear the alternator over the blades those blades are quiet it's got to be. Man, that's smooth. Many good things to you and yours. Thank you.